Q&A time! I think I was laughing. <laughs> Where am I meant to look? At the camera. In that lens. Q&A time, you guys always ask for more of the rocket, so I've managed to convince the beautiful rocket to join me today on a Q&A. We ask you guys some questions on Instagram and on the YouTube community thing to get some questions. The rocket got loads of questions, you do realise this is Giorgio Coppola cycling. This isn't about the rocket, but we'll start with the rocket ones, get uh, boring ones out of the way, and then we'll come on to the main event. And I can just take a seat, can I? No, you'll have to ask the questions. Oh. Come on. Look, she's got her mug of, of whatever's in there. Right. The question was, your thing is cycling. What's Sarah's thing apart from cake? I am just a big number one dedicated wife supporter of George A. Coppola cycling. She is. That's a number full one. time job. Full time <laughs> job. Number one camera lady. No, we are, we are big foodies though. Just like... Yeah anything food. What do we do for work? Obviously I'll answer mine. I'm an engineer. I'm a full-time supporter of <laughs> YouTube content creator. No. No, I work in marketing. She's a marketing manager and you'd like to think my marketing would be a bit better but can't get to do anything. T oh, tea or coffee? I like both but I'd probably pick coffee. Yeah, I'm coffee. Best cook? Don't need to answer that one. Who's the messiest? Probably me as yeah, well. You, you Sarah me. likes. I am. I am. I can be messy, but then it would also stress me out, and I do like to tidy. Yeah. Whereas you, you, you just have no concept. Sarah likes cleaning, but me, nah, nah. Who's your favourite CX rider? That cyclocross, yeah. So yeah, that's cyclocross. <laughs> I just get mixed up. XC. Sarah gets very confused between CX and what, XC. Like, professional or anyone? Just anyone. Um, I'll probably have to shout out my fellow uh, camera partner, <laughs> Scotty Dog. Scotty go. Dog. That's not his real name, this is his Instagram oh, yeah. handle. <laughs> this one is from Scott. Does the camera crew get coffee and cake expenses? Absolutely bloody not. Get maybe about... one day, if you start earning yeah. enough through it, maybe we can have maybe. A, maybe Scott and I can have like a company card. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day when I'm earning more than about £2 for a video. When are you going to have kids? Well... It's uh, my birthday weekend, so hopefully sure. tonight. <laughs> Will Sarah ever do a CX race? I think like it's just not my cup of tea. Sports racing, yeah, despite <laughs> maybe one day she will do one. But honestly, I don't know. The next one, how do you put up with me? It's bloody legendary being with me, like isn't it? Like, it be full on. What a life! Like actually, Sarah's hairdresser watches some of these, and he said, "Is he just?" Has he got a problem? Has he got, <laughs> has he got something wrong with him? But recently I have thought... No, because you're always... Obviously on camera you're very, like... Yeah, you're, like... Energetic. A little bit more energetic when you're on camera. Because you obviously need to be, too. Trying to, like... If I'm, if I'm, I'm, you're you're alright, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't, like, make a very exciting video. But, yeah, sometimes... I'll, I'll probably do have a problem. Like, just in day-to-day -day life, I'll just, like, come out with some absolute waffle. And I've said to Sarah, I need to get one of them mics. Just mic me up, film me. I think it'd be entertaining. She doesn't think so. Just started watching your channel. Does the rocket race? Negative. N A. And after yesterday, probably not going to ride again. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the nickname The Rocket? It's because of a rocket farts. No. <laughs> it's not really. It is because... Basically, in one of the original videos, the rocket came on a bike ride for the first time. She absolutely turboed it up a hill. I just referred to her as the rocket, and it sort of stuck from there. But we can't even find the footage of mm, when we, the very first yeah, when that you happened. Must have the so, video, or you... Jersey or Guernsey? Well, I've not been to either, so I don't think it's just pick one. Comment. Just pick one. Can't. Pick one. No, they are no comment from either of to... us. Well, you can't pick somewhere. Yeah, we haven't been there. Need to go. Red, red or white, white wine. Ooh, interesting question. <laughs> You're more of a rose, um, ain't you? Classy, yeah, classy, classy think... bird. Get me down spoons. Have a rose. <laughs> that, George. I don't really like red wine. No, so you're but white I, wine. I definitely pick white, but I, out of all wines, I would pick rose. White wine or rose, yes. And do you think George will ever win a CX race? To be honest, pro probably not, probably to be honest. Not. Like... Maybe, Maybe like, but, but. like a proper race, like a UCI one's absolutely oh, never, God, no. um, <laughs> and like like the local League Wessex ones, like if the stars align and people don't turn up, then maybe, but I mean... It's all about the taking part though, not Yeah, it's about, 
You've got to be having fun. You've got to be enjoying it. Yes. Thank you, Rocket. Have fun. Giorgio or a lifetime subscription to cake at your local bakery? Oh. It's got to be me, really, isn't it? Because I am a catch. I am a well, what have fruity, flavoured cake. If we use a, a supply at the street bake shop. Or you. Mm. Oh, of course. <laughs> the bakery. <laughs> A new bike or the rocket? Of course, you, a new bike. How did we meet and do you have any passions? She's passionate about me, baby. <laughs> and uh, we met at school, didn't we? We've been we together... Since we were 15. Yeah, since we are 15. So, so? 15 years now, and to be quite honest, I'm getting a bit fed up with her. <laughs> No one's asked the question of how do you put up with the rocket. The questions tend to be how do I put up with you. So I would be think care I'd think carefully. How do I put up with a rocket? I... No, no one's asked that question. Yeah, no. What I'm, I'm saying is people are asking me. I just drone you out after a while. Yeah. I just let you. I have this hearing problem from work, so a lot of the time I don't actually hear the rocket, and a lot of the time I just nod, and then she says to me, "What did I just say?" And then you've just got to guess, lads. Just give it your best shot and pick out some random words that you think you heard. And that's how we've survived this long. Do you drink flavoured coffee? Oh yeah, these are nice questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, partial to a gingerbread latte. Yeah, ginger. Um, Can't say that. Oh, like a variety of syrups, like caramel, vanilla. She'll take anything. Mm. Anything. Absolutely anything. So, that is the Rockets section wrapped up. Thanks, like, bye. thanks for all the questions. She's now, no, you, but you're taking over now as part of the asking crew and to be honest I want more questions to me next time people. These were obviously my ones would be more cycling related. No Understand. one's going do you like flavoured coffee? No, no one cares if I like flavoured coffee. What training did you do to get to where you are and what advice would you give people? The training I'd done, I'd just done a lot of hours, I'm not going to lie. So when I first got into cycling, or got back into it, I was literally just doing it to try and get a little bit fitter. And then I got into Trainer Road, done a bit of that, and then I got a coach. I was working with Nikki Bramia for a bit, and I'm not going to lie, it was full on. But she got me from being like lap at Wessex League and every race I got lapped didn't I pretty much every race I got lapped I was absolutely nowhere and within like a year she got me like on the podium top fives but it was like big hours so I'd done a lot of zone two a lot of running yeah running there was gym work it was just it was like another full-time job it was full on but I'd massively thank her for getting me to that level. Then I took a little bit of a break because I wanted to be able to ride with the rocket more. I felt like I couldn't ride with her because like zone two, although we go out and ride, it's not really zone two. We're either doing zone 400 up a hill or it's zone zero because she can't keep up with you, man. So then I stopped for a bit. Then I got another coach who was bim bam coaching and now I'm just sort of coach myself and back doing what I want to do basically and any advice basically if, if you want to make it you've just got to really commit your life to it there's no two ways about it the level of riders a lot of it will be partly genetics partly just committing to putting in hours and I understand not everyone's got x amount of hours to do I was lucky like I finished work early I don't cook and Sarah does do a lot to allow me to be able to one make these videos, two train, blah blah blah. What is Razo? Razo. What? Wait. As if I didn't know this question was coming. Ooh. Oosh. It is a little project me and the rocket are working on. I use the rocket loosely, mainly me. Like people have asked me about merch and stuff, and I didn't want to bring something out that had like Giorgio Coppola cycling on. So the plan is. To start a business, I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing, I'm not going to lie. We've got some t-shirts, some base layers, some socks, some beanies, stuff like that. I've probably put too much money into it because I got a bit excited. But I'm also going to hopefully get a race team kit that is currently being designed and stuff like that. And if you don't know what this means... Uh, should we give it away now? I'm going to do a full video on this at some point, but we've got to like build a website and stuff like that. But the proper pronunciation is probably Razzo. 
and it's rocket in yeah. Italian. So we're going to just call it Razzo <laughs> and the team, the team kit will be like Razzo Racing, stuff like that. I'll put an in, we would start an Instagram. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're start an Instagram, so follow us. So if you want to support this channel, eventually these will come out. I think it's pretty cool and the idea behind it's quite cool. Maybe you don't, but we're going to try something. If it flops, it flops, but I'm hoping to put a bit of time into it and make it good. Wait, I'm waffling too much. The rocket was rapid on the questions. Go, go, go. Any countries you would like to visit for International CX? I'd love to visit loads, but I'm not going to lie. The International UCI CX level is above what I'll ever be capable of getting to. So it's such an expensive commitment. If the channel blew up and it could pay me to go and do some of these races, I probably would, but... To be honest, for me to go to like Belgium last Christmas, it cost us a lot of money and obviously Del Boy, the, the bank of Del Boy massively helped with that. But I can't, like I know I ride for Dad and he just loves to see me and Ben racing so it helps. But I need to find a way to... You're 30 now. Yeah, I'm 30 now. I need to find a way to fund it myself. So hopefully like the Razzo thing could fund us going to different places, racing different places. That'd be nice. But I want to find a level that I can go and compete at rather than there's no point me lining up with WoW and Pidcock again. Um, it was fun but I was out of my depth. A lot of questions to get through Jordan. Yeah sorry we got loads of questions and I didn't want to miss one out because I felt bad. Go on go. Do you train in the rain or go on the turbo? Don't like training in the rain I'd rather go on the turbo if I'm out and it rains. Of our bike oh, racing, yeah. pouring rain. We rode in the rain yesterday it's I just I don't know, it's the admin after of being all wet, yeah. all the muddy kit, blah, blah, blah. But I do sometimes go out in the rain, so yeah, but I'd rather just jump on the turbo. Do you think if you started cycling earlier and trained more, you would be one of the top guys? Can you have a bit of enthusiasm? I thought I actually gave that quite a bit of enthusiasm <laughs> at the end, but okay, I'll uh, If I started training, I, obviously I trained up until I was 12, nothing serious. Um, I was just like going out with my dad and stuff and I probably gave up cycling when I was like 13, 14. If I, my dad says to me, if you'd carried on, you'd probably be good now. Like not in a negative way, like better than I am. But I don't, you don't know. I think a lot of it is based around genetics and I'll be honest, I am at like the peak that I can get at right now with trying to do this YouTube channel, trying to do the Razzo thing, race, train, work, yeah, yeah full-time work, trying to maintain a relationship with a rocket so she doesn't divorce me. I don't think I can get any better than where I'm at now. It, and if I do, it'd be marginally. The only way I could get better is if I turned into a monk and just rode my bike and got a divorce. Hmm. <laughs> And stop working, but obviously I can't do that. When picking a coach, what are the green and red flags? Blew my bloody ears it's off. It's so, enthusiasm. Yeah, that's enthusiastic. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. No, now. no, we want enthusiasm. So picking a coach, green flags. I'd say you've got to just pick someone that you trust that you can just say they are. Tell me they what are. to do. Yeah, just <laughs> they just, are. Yeah, just <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like there, there we go. There you are. There you are. <laughs> Tell me what to do. Like. You say jump, I say how high sort of thing. And also someone that just inspires you to get the work done. For me, it's more about the accountability. Like when someone puts a horrible session in, if you're willing to do it and bury yourself because you know they're going to look at it, that massively helps. Red flags, I mean, you've got to sort of like the person. If you don't like them when you have an initial chat with them, that's probably a red flag because they're going to be in contact with you a lot and stuff like that. So... That's probably my only red flag. I'm just happy to if like not be worried. It's not always about like the best rider doesn't make the best coach. So you mm. don't have to have like Nino Scherter as your coach because he might not be a good coach if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Dream road bike. Dream road bike. Oh, honestly, I don't think I have like a dream road bike. I really do think that I'm going to go disc brake next because in the UK it's just so wet. So I have been looking at a giant TCR but I'm not going to get one because the rocket no. said no. But I like my giant TCX cross bike, so I wouldn't, I've just thought, yeah, that worked, that'd be nice. But I mean, like, S-Works, it's such a flex having an S-Works road bike. They look cool, Trek. I don't really have, like, a dream one, unfortunately. Would you do a road bike tea 
tea season? Absolutely not. They are painful TTs. I might actually, I'm, like next season I'm thinking about mixing it up a bit. I might jump in the odd one or two. Maybe get the rocket to do one. <laughs> do they do e-bike TTs? No, but I... I just don't like the pain of them. It's that like relentless effort, and there's nothing to to chase, if you know what I mean. Are you looking at the camera or the screen? The camera. Okay, because I keep looking at the screen. No, ah, oh, you got to look at the camera. You look at it when you see this. Rocket, look down their soul. Blow them a kiss. No. <laughs> right. Do you have any tips for the mental side of cross? If I drop the wheel, my head goes down, and I stop pushing as hard, but later realise the gap wasn't as big as I thought, and maybe even closable. Mm, and for me, just putting a camera on the front of my bike is a massive thing. Like, knowing that I'm going to show it to people just makes me not want to give up. Yeah, there's Isn't like. It, did you say it or did your dad say it once about like you never know what's happening? Like, so even if there's a gap, those people in front could crash, have a mechanical, so you never yeah. know what could happen basically you ne yeah you never know and I think a lot of it's like for me as well like my dad's made the effort to be there in the pits Sarah's obviously filming me so I'm always giving it a hundred percent and sometimes I feel like there's certain people that I don't want to lose to and I don't want them to pass me so that keeps me pushing on I think you've got to remember as well that it's just all really good training to just keep pushing on and and suffering and it's going to help your next race. Thoughts on GCN plus being axed and how to, to view slash get CX out to people? Absolutely great news for my channel, no I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm devastated well, to be honest. How many subscribers do they have? Is it all going to come to you? Oh no, that's like a, the Rocket don't know what it is, it's like a subscription, I pay for it. Oh, I do think, you? Yeah, I think it's, bloody hell, check my bank statement. <laughs> I think it is absolutely mega because you get all your cross, you get like mountain biking on there, everything. It's a shame that it's going down. Like I'm going to have to try and, well, probably going to have to pay for Discovery now. So there is still a chance to get it. It's a shame. Yeah, I think it's a chance for, like like I made, made the video about British Cycling getting stuff out. Maybe it's a chance for that. I'd happily pay more monthly. How much do you pay currently? I think it's £40 a year, pretty sure anyway. I watched the Nero show talk about this and they've said it should be more. And I, I, at the time I was like, nah, nah, nah. But now they're getting axed. I'm like, yeah, I probably would pay more for it because it is really good. But it's a shame. Do you have trouble sleeping before a race? Not trouble before a race, trouble in general. Actually, I'm, I can get to sleep and I love going to bed early. My problem mm -hmm. is when I wake up, if I wake up at like 3 a.m., I can't get back to sleep then because my brain is just like ticking, thinking about oh, I've got to edit this video, got to do this at work, got to do this training session. And then my brain is just like thinking about all these things that I've got to do. Not that I've got like the most hectic life with kids and stuff like that, but it is, it is full on. You're like thinking of all these stuff. Then I can't get back to sleep. Sometimes people like see my Strava thing like, oh my God, you're on your bike at 5 a.m. You've been up for two hours. But I've, I've just ordered a whoop band. I'm treating myself for my birthday because I need to sort it out and I want to be able to track my sleep better. I've got a Garmin watch, but I don't think it actually tracks my sleep very well because sometimes I like get up and I know I've been awake and then it says I've been asleep till five or whatever when you know you haven't. So it's you something... You just started taking magnesium before yeah. bed because that's meant to help. The rocket told well. me maybe try magnesium before bed. I've literally only done like two days of it. So does it work? Don't know yet. Maybe that's what I want the band for as well. Might help me find out if it works or not. I massively struggle sleeping after a race because I'm wired. I've got caffeine in my system um, and your legs are still like fired up a little bit. So that Sunday nights or whenever is an absolute write off for me. If you only had three hours a week, what would you do strength training? Uh, if I only had three hours a week to train, does this I'd, mean like gym training? Strength? Yeah, would you still strength train? Oh, it's tough. I think I'd just do whatever I enjoy. If I enjoyed strength training, I'd add it in, but I'd keep it like probably quite minimal. Maybe like two 30 minute sessions, something like that. The problem is, you're not at three hours a week, you're not going to move the needle. To be, I'm not going to be. I'm going to be honest, like six hours a week you might be able to start moving the needle and getting faster, but three is really unlikely. You could dedicate all those three hours just to cycling, but I think there's other elements of life. If, you're only doing, if you've only got time for three hours a week, you've got to 
sort of set your bar a little bit lower maybe and think, would strength training help me in day to day life be better? Yes. So maybe put that in, do I enjoy it? If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. You probably don't clean, you don't yeah. do, you don't cook. Yeah, it's exactly why I don't do them things. I don't enjoy it. I, I would personally add it in because I like it and I'm getting older and I want to try and keep some strength. But so at, much strength. at three hours a week, you're probably not going to be moving the needle too much anyway. So it's a tricky one. It's got to be what you enjoy doing. What made you get into biking? Boy got me into it when I was younger. I then tried to be a golfer, etc. etc. I then done CrossFit before I got back into cycling, and I literally just got my bike out to do hill reps for some cardio. Then I like entered a race, and then it like I just got addicted to it. It was like the whole power thing, trying to get better power and the racing thing, trying to become a better racer. And you sort of, slowly, I got super addicted. Like, I remember when I first started and I was like, I just want to beat this person. And then it was like, and then I remember I got to this point, I'll, I'll name drop them. It was the Sarah and Velo boys. It was David Brazier and Alex Watkins. I was like, literally, if I could just get as good as them, I'd be happy. And then I got to the point where I was like at their level. And then I was like, who's next, who can I, and I, I think I have got that like all in mentality with things and it was always like who's next and then I've sort of got to this point now where the people that are above me, I don't think I can ever, that sounds negative but with the time I've got and everything like job, house, relationship, I don't think that gap's closable and I've accepted that now. <laughs> So you're on to the next spot. Yeah, so uh What's buy my next? stuff so then I don't have to work as much. <laughs> and golf, crossfit, yeah. cycling. Cycling bit of tennis? Yeah, I might try a bit of tennis. Rugby? No. No. Got done rugby before, got knocked into next week. Never will I do rugby again in my life. Done that in PE, I'm only yeah, skinny. On, on. Cycling goals for next year. Oh, to be honest, I haven't got any. I'm thinking oh, about. So oh, that like sounds you. terrible. I know. At the moment, I'm like in my head. I'm thinking, next year is it time to back off a bit and try and focus on actually one making this YouTube channel better, two making my wife happy for once. She's always miserable with me. That's why she never smiles. Three trying to get Razo off the ground. And I don't, I, you can't do it all. When I'm training like a madman for something, mm. something has to sacrifice. Like, and the reason why I can't get any better with everything that's going on is because the thing that I always sacrifice is recovery. And. Are you going to say me? <laughs> and the rocket. I always sacrifice. <laughs> Re no. Recovery. It's recovery. So, like, sleep. Everything. Well, you go to bed at like half eight sometimes. No, right? no, but no. Seven. Uh, right, no, but you're right. only as good as what you can recover from. So when I'm trying to do like 15 hour, 20 hour weeks, everything else gets sacrificed because I can't recover to do things with Sarah and you don't have the motivation to try and start like a brand and stuff like that. So it all gets absolutely squashed. Debating doing like a mixture of things, maybe trying some gravel next year, Ooh. maybe do like, I wouldn't, I don't think I'll ever do an open road road race again. I'm not gonna lie. You I, a fan of road no, race. I feel like they're just dangerous. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Uh, a, I lack, might, a lack of catering. Lack of catering, lack of coffee. Mm. I might do a crit like, potentially yeah i might just mix it up mountain bike see what's what i'm feeling like but that could all change i change like that yeah will you ever cut off the long locks absolutely not i've like considered it the thing the re only reason i have long hair is because every six months sarah just gets the scissors goes wapow cuts it off good to go again whereas if i have to go to the barbers like every six weeks I think I've got to take two hours out of my day to go there. Two hours? Yeah, you know, sometimes you've got to sit there no, like an hour, wait, wait for the okay. person in front of you, get an hour, and I'm like, oh, that's the only reason I have this. It took a long time to yeah, get to that point. Yeah, it took so long to grow so it. Like if you cut it and go back to shorter hair, it's like a solid two years to get it back, and it's yeah. not the prettiest. Oh, it's horrible. And the process. other problem is, it's... I, I don't like the fact that it's hassle. You have to put it up all the time. I don't like wearing it down. Mm. 
and it gets a bit windy and you get some flyaways and yeah. you're not, not happy. And like taking your helmet on and off messes it up. Same but I also don't want to go to the barbers every six you're weeks. You're just lazy. Yeah, I'm lazy. What's your hobby? What do uh, you do outside of work? <laughs> I'd like to say my hobby is cycling. My, another big hobby is making these YouTube videos. Yeah. I love having someone to talk to. You guys, <laughs> you don't talk to me. <laughs> How do you get ready for a race? Ready for a race. Are we so, talking on the day, the night before, the week before? Um, uh, well, there's another question there. What's my normal week of training? So I'll cat. I'll throw these into two, so we don't have to do two separate ones. But as a rough breakdown, I gym two to three times a week. I run one, maybe twice a week, depending on how I feel. I'll then do two hard sessions. If it was an important race, I'd probably only do one hard session. The rest of it is just filled with what zone two and whatever I've got time for, basically. And it and it changes a bit. Sometimes I might I might do a lower volume week at the moment, and I'll, then I'll try and keep the intensity really hard. Other times, if I've got more time and I fancy doing some more zone two, I will do that. The zone two stuff really helped me. I'm not going to lie, but not everyone's got the time. And I've found that, like, if I go out, do a four or five hour ride, could I have used three hours of that time to edit the vlog and then have X amount of time to spend with Sarah and do other things rather than just being like cycling, cycling, cycling. So, yeah, that's roughly how I break down my week. To get ready for a race, it is practice lap, rollers, well, no, caffeine an hour before the race, rollers, good to go. Yeah? And lots of carbs the night before. Yeah, I like pasta the night before. Overnight oats. Yeah, as overnight the oats as the pre-meal. And yeah, that's the problem with being a foodie. Like this time of year, I want to do national champs this year. I want to be as fast as I can for that. But I've realised when I had my best results last year in the mountain bike season, I was 65 kilos. I'm a little bit heavier than that now. And to get back down to that, it would be such a sacrifice. Ooh. Yeah, and we've got like my birthday, the Rocket's birthday, Christmas, Christmas. and I'm like... Pancake day, Easter. <laughs> that's after national. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I don't know if I can sacrifice my life enough to get back to that weight. But I performed the best I ever have at that weight because I managed to hold the power I was at and be a lighter weight. The problem was it wasn't maintainable because I couldn't enjoy the things we liked to do together. Anything on the bikes to get ready for the race or? Any, uh, ma bike maintenance, that's a negative. Del Boy hates me for it. But I don't have time because I'm always doing uh. this. So I'm terrible at maintaining my bike and then it gets in a bad way. Take it to dad, he goes nuts and then has to repair it for me. Yeah, so without Del Boy, I wouldn't be cycling. I need to start looking after my bike. Because you go bikes. to a race and just like almost hand deliver your bike to your dad and then go off. Yeah, Del, sort that quick. He's got a problem. He loves it when I do it on the day to make him more stressed. Uh, camera setup. Camera setup. I've got a Canon. I'm trying to find the name of it. It says EOS. It's, it says EOS. I think it's like a something 50. I know nothing about cameras. So I've got a Canon camera and then I also use GoPros. I only got this camera this year to mm. try and get the quality a bit better. Better audio of like a mic on the top. But it can't get wet this one so it's yeah. iffy in cross races. It can't get wet so we go between like this and the GoPro. I mainly just use the Sound GoPro. And phones. Yeah and phones. Would you ever do track cycling? Yeah a lot of people asked about track. Negative. I'd done it when I was about 12. Feared for my life on those banks. I just thought if I go down there that's going to burn. And um, I don't like not having brakes. I'm not going to lie. Is that a bit of a scary Ooh, thing I know, to I say? I love a good break. I you love, love a good. You, she loves a good break. Mm. Like tea break. <laughs> Brakes on bikes, the lot. But maybe I'll give it another crack. But it was just, it was scary. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's a no. That's a right, no. Last question. Gaining strength in the winter as a MTB rider. <sighs> It's tough this, it depends if you do cross as well, if you're, if you're just, I know the person that's asked this question does cross as well, and I think if your main goal is to become a mountain bike racer, 
then you have to make sacrifice the cross you have to basically sacrifice your cross season so you can do the training the gym work in terms of gym you want to be doing three to six reps for strength three to six sets is what I roughly go off you don't need to go mad like that and you want to be hitting your compound lifts heavy you need to build strength you need to pick up big weights basically like the rocket does your compound lifts, your squats, your deadlifts. I love single leg work for cycling. I do Bulgarian oh, split squats. I knew you were say that. She hates Bulgarian split squats. I program for the wife. Not that she does it every. It's, she's <laughs> hit and miss. But so Bulgarian split squats. Also RDLs. You like an RDL? Like, like an RDL to hit the posterior chain lunges. Single leg stuff's really good. But yeah, you. It's not something you can just do and I strength train year round now because I just want to be stronger for life and I think you've got to really put the time in for it. It's not something that you can just get overnight. You've got to put a lot of work into it and if you want to start ripping it up in the mountain bike season then your cross season has to take a hit. You can't. I've just found you can't do it all unless you're extremely gifted but you'll see even like Pidcock, Wow. Van der Poel have time off where they're probably doing all this like now they're not at the cross races so they're probably doing all this and it is hard to sacrifice things like I don't like missing the cross season because I love it but then I also want to do the mountain bike season so you're in catch 22 it's a really tricky one but lift heavy protein pro yeah get Looking your protein, protein in for recovery and Probably, I'm like lifting three times a week to try and get strong. I don't, you can't just go to the gym once a week. Like, yeah, you'll get some benefits at the start, but you need to keep going. And it's all about progressive overload as well. You need to increase the the weight. I think it's like, what, one to three percent? I'll need to check. I'll pop the number on the screen if I can, can remember it. One to three percent of progressive overload a week on the weight. So if you start at 60, next week will be like 62.5, blah, blah, blah. You can't just stay at those weights. You need to keep progressing on the same as what you'd do in your cycling training. But I hope this has been yeah. informative, interesting. Thank you for all the questions. Oh, someone else also asked, um, what's your pet hate? What pet hates have you got about the rocket? And She's really. You asked that question. No, what, me. <laughs> she's really. I just thought I'd dig her out. Now she's really elbowy when she cuts her knife with her knife yeah, and fork. It's because I have my fork in my right hand. Yeah. And, knife in my and hand. Um, she's really quite demanding sometimes. Like, do this, do that. Give me a break. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Found something <laughs> out about the beautiful rocket myself. And if you've got any more questions, we might do another one of these. Maybe. Maybe. I like talking, so <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.